Thanks for coming today. Appreciate it. And uh, um, you know, after playing our first game last week, I, you know, we watched that video. We can certainly learn a lot from that game. And as I told our players, we should make our most improvement. You know, from our first game to our second, and that's how we're approaching this week. And I thought we got it off to a really good start yesterday. Um, not only in the meeting room, but on Mondays we go out in the field for an hour and. Um, for a little cleanup, but then to get right into the opponent, special teams being half the practice and offense and defense being the other half of the practice. Um, the good news, I think, coming out of the Syracuse game for us was when I looked in our players' eyes after the game, okay, I can see the disappointment. I could see how much it hurt them to have played as poorly in that game. And, and that's a good place to start if you're going to now regroup and get yourself back on track to hopefully play better the next week. Um, so, although I was disappointed in how we played, I was encouraged by that reaction and how we responded yesterday um, to get better. And as I told our team, the wins, the wins, um, you know, stay with you for a day. The losses stay with you, you know, until you play your next game and have a chance to play better. And uh, so we're certainly looking forward to get back out there to practice and get back out there this week um, to, 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 pl to play better on a Saturday afternoon. Uh, Gardner-Webb is 1-0. And uh, when I watched their video, what I was impressed with, especially, you know, looking at the things we didn't do well, they're a well-coached team, and they did the things in a game well that you want a team to do in order to win. And, uh, so I was really impressed with that. I saw a well-coached, fundamental team. I didn't see a lot of penalties. I didn't see them making mistakes. I saw them go four for four in the red zone for touchdowns. Um, so those things stick out to you when you're watching another team play. Um, you know, in the last three years, they played at Mississippi State, at Georgia Tech, which they lost 10-7 on a field goal at the end, and then last year at NC State. So um, they'll, they'll be in here ready to play, and, and they'll be a difficult opponent for us. And we certainly need to play a lot better um, than we did last week. Um, so with that uh, being said, I'll open it up, Elton, for any questions you have, and I'll try to wing it as best I can for you. Helen Thomas. Yes. I had to wear red. Yeah. Um, I guess if that means I get the first one. Just what did you see on film? I mean, what? I mean, where did you did you go? Oh my God! This really stuck out. Or well, the things that stuck out for me is that were the unforced errors. I talked about that a little Saturday night, but then when you look on film and you, and you look at them, there was way too many unforced errors. And unforced error will be whether you line up wrong and get an illegal procedure penalty, which, or you have a mental error. Okay. It's one thing to know I have to block the same linebacker. If he beats me, he beats me. But it's another thing to not block the guy you're supposed to block. So we had too many things like that go on in the game, unforced-wise, which um, was disappointing. You know, on defense, uh, you know, we, we gave. We, we, I thought we fought, we played well most of the time, but we had gave up seven big plays for 217 yards. Right. Now they only had 431 at the game, so we gave up almost half of the yards on seven plays, and that, that's something you have to eliminate. It's one of the things we try to do is make big plays on offense and not give them up on defense. And we only had three big plays on offense, and we gave up seven on defense. So I look at those things as we go across the board. We're certainly disappointed in our special teams um, because we put a lot of time into that. And we had a game-changing play against us, and that just you, know, you can't have that in the course of a game. Everybody talks about explosion plays and whatever. Right. I would think you'd have to factor that into a game plan, so to speak. Uh, we want to get X number, and you got to concede, or you know, the the opposition's going to get two. They're going to get four. Yeah, they're going to, so how do you? Our defense is three. All right. Uh, so that, that's that's what I'm asking. So yeah. you got about four more explosion plays against you than you and would then, like then to see. We, then, then you go with thinking. Obviously, we'd like yeah. to have none, but right. realistically, you That's know, we go in there saying on defense is three. We don't put a number on on offense, but we list those things right mm -hmm. there. You guys right. are in the meeting room, and those are the things we talk to our team about every day, mm -hmm. about how you win a football game. And big plays are in that, and we want to make them on offense, and we want to um, not give them up on defense. You know, the turnover battle was a positive for us. I mean, we took the ball away three times. We didn't turn it over at all. Mm -hmm. uh, but there were just too many other things that we didn't do um, efficiently in the game. And, but, you know, our third down conversion on defense, they converted over 53%. And uh, we, we were 24%, I believe it was. So that certainly is a 
a dramatic difference. What happened on the block field on the field? Uh, excuse me? The block field goal on the field. The block field goal, we had a combination of things. We had a uh, slow operation time, we had a low kick, and we had penetration on the left side. So all three of those things. Now we could have, if, if the, the kick was on time and low, we maybe could have made the, you know, had a chance to make the kick because the penetration wouldn't have mattered. Okay. If we had no penetration, even with the slow op time, we could have maybe got the kick off. So um, just, we can't have both happen at once. So um, just we need, we're going to work on it on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday this week, and we're going to have live kicks on Tuesday, and we're going to get it fixed. I was watching you down the field when you set the field goal group on. You hesitated just a second, then you said, "Let's go." I hesitated because I wanted to, uh, uh, in my mind, I wanted to. Um, I was keeping track of our range. Okay. Okay, of where we were at for our kicker, and I wanted to talk to Vince one last time right. to make sure that we were within our range. How close were you decided to go for it instead of kick the field goal? Uh, really, it was all about the range to right. whether I would have okay. gone for it. If Vince had told me he thought it was out of his range, then I probably would have gone for it. But at 17 to six. I felt like we were within two scores, and you know we were in a, we were in a touchdown and the two point conversion, the field goal away, and and our defense had been playing, yeah. been playing well, and I felt like that could give us a chance to you know hopefully get something going on offense, or they had turned it over already a few times sure. to, to help us out. Rob, Rob, can you talk about the <coughs> offense and what did you see in the in the film that you could have taken good out of it? If there was anything, especially thinking that the running game just couldn't well, I get thought, going. Um, I thought Nate Bernie ran the ball well. I really did. Uh, I thought he gave us a spark at times. Uh, I thought we played much better in the second half than the first half. Uh, Jeremy LaFrance had seven catches. Some of those were at the end of the game, but I thought he ran some good routes and, and, and did some things very positive there. Uh, you know, Patrick, when he stayed in the pocket and didn't either wasn't flushed or flushed himself, I thought he threw some good balls when he stayed in there, uh, which is one of the things he's going to have to work on this week. But Certainly, we made way too many, you know, errors on offense to be a, to, to have a performance that you can win with. Same with the line play, giving up the three sacks. You like to have that kind you know, of. The, uh, yes, we don't want to give up any sacks. Right. And uh, we had um, some linemen play better than others, um, but uh, on a whole, we, we have we, we, we have to, to improve. How many of those were line sacks versus quarterback sacks? You know, I'd say. Um, one, the last sack was purely a protection sack, okay, when he got hit. Another one, we lost a yard because he, yeah. he shifted in the pocket and ran. I would put that one more on Patrick, and I can't recall the first sack off the top of my head. I know you were concerned early in the week about opening up against a blitzing team. Mm -hmm. Did they blitz as much as you thought they would? Or? Yeah, they, 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 they did. Now, we, we, we did at times, I thought, very well with our protection, the way we had it um, installed for this game. And then you put the onus on the receivers um, and the timing. And, no, and losing our back, I thought, hurt us because when they backed off us, we didn't have the back to be able to throw the ball to. And, and that's the, what you robbed Peter to pay Paul with um, in the way we had to protect um, in that situation. But uh, I thought at times our protection, um, our, our seven-man protection, per se, seven- or eight-man protection, was, was very good in the game. There were some other times where I um, didn't think our our base.